Hello, my name is Ariana Wilson. I am a San Francisco firefighter with the San Francisco Fire Department. I've been employed with them for the past seven years. Prior to that, volunteered with them for about two and a half years. I was born on Trader Street and then grew up most of my life on Ocean Avenue and then spent the latter part of my life over in the Panhandle region. I'm also a Lincoln High School graduate. Yeah, so I grew up in the neighborhoods that I had previously mentioned, but then spent most of my time in school living with my dad over in the Panhandle region. Um, when I got hired with the fire department, I ended up actually staying with my dad through the fire academy just due to expenses around housing in the city. Um, and luckily after I graduated, we were lucky enough to have a building that my grandmother purchased a very long time ago. And so I was able to rent a unit in that building from my family. So in general, San Francisco is not a very affordable city. Most of my friends either have two or three roommates, some people live in co-ops, which means they're living with about 10 to 12 people just to afford living here in the city. Um, I've quite, quite a few coworkers have had to actually leave the city to afford rent just due to access to schooling for their children. Um, they have two or three children and it's just not affordable to pay for the type of schooling that they want in the city in addition to rent. So if it wasn't for the building that my grandma owned at somewhat of a prorated rent, I would not be able to probably afford my own place in the city on the income that I have without there being a bunch of negotiable um, circumstances. So my father was a union plumber for the last 30 years with the city and county of San Francisco. He has since then retired and based on what he makes on retirement and social security, it would not be attainable for him to live here in this city. If he were to be looking for places to rent, he'd probably be stuck with like a 500 to 800 square foot room in an apartment or an in-law that probably didn't include you know, gas, electric, internet, water, and all of those things. And most of my friends that do live in the city are in very, very close quarters or very small apartments, paying rents upwards to about $3,500 a month. Yeah, so my youngest sister, she got home from college a couple years ago and is still living at home with our mom due to the fact that rent is so expensive and there isn't really the luxury of getting to rent your own apartment without the assistance of a second income or knowing somebody who's able to prorate that amount for you. My brother um, is currently in grad school and lives with his partner and if it weren't for that they wouldn't be able to afford the apartments that they have previously or currently live in. Yeah, so the San Francisco Fire Department used to have a residency requirement which meant that you had to be a San Francisco resident to work here and in part that was in place due to the fact that we are susceptible to natural disasters, specifically earthquakes. So when the next big earthquake happens, it's not a question of whether it will happen, it's more of when it'll happen, you're going to need all your resources. We saw what happened in Loma Prieta, we've seen the damages and the negative effects that it has on our city, and what ends up happening is now we've had to open that up to broaden the amount of people we can accept in and to get our numbers higher because the need has since, and the demand has since increased. Um, but a lot of the firefighters can't afford to live here, so they're having to move to Sacramento or to the East Bay or to the North Bay to find more affordable housing in order to actually live comfortably. Um, but when this happens, we then end up with not having as many people that we need when the time calls for these resources. So growing up, I went to Lake Shore Elementary School and at Lake Shore Elementary School, there was a very diverse group of socioeconomic makeups. So most of my friends had very lowered middle or working class families and households. And even within that, going to friends' houses, it was always kind of like a two bed, one bath situation where even if your parent was just a teacher, they were able to afford this and this was sustainable. And we grew up in a household that was a two bedroom, one bath for six people, which was really crammed, but we made it work. And later my parents were able to afford a renovation, which created more space for us. But this was something that was attainable. Now we look at things and trying to even just refinance or reconstruct or rebuild your house, going from a two bedroom, one bath is just not attainable, especially with interest rates. And so you see a lot of now what we would call lower class, previously it would be called middle class working families just aren't able to sustain mortgages, 
interest rates, re uh, monthly rents. And so what ends up happening is they need to leave the city to more affordable areas, which are no longer places like Oakland, Marin. You have to keep pushing further out of the Bay Area. Um, and that negatively impacts not only kind of like your quality of life, but your ability to access these resources that are really specific and unique to the city of San Francisco. So I'd say that, you know, where we grew up off of Ocean Avenue, that's a pretty quiet, sleepy neighborhood and it always has been. Um, but there was kind of this level of comfort knowing that there was safety in walking from point A to point B and being able to go to the store as a kid and being able to knock on your neighbor's door and just knowing there was that community. But in the later part of our lives, we spent a lot of time near the panhandle. And growing up, there were churches that were active, which no longer are partially because of the lack of funding or people that previously lived there that actually used to um, go to church, they no longer live there. So the neighborhood I grew up in was predominantly African American. And probably when I was about 12 or 13, um, there was this mass exodus and people were told that we're staying in kind of affordable housing, that if they left and came back, renovations would have a place for them. And that really wasn't the case. So now you see kind of this mass, again, exodus of the old community that was previously there, not able to come back and a shift in that, which brings a lot more money and different types of resources. So as a kid, we had our local corner store and everybody knew us by first name basis. We had grandparents that kind of looked out for us and houses that we could go in and out of. And now the neighborhood that I live in, you knock on a neighbor's door and you try and say hello and it's kind of welcome with a, what are you doing? Um, so it's just a shift in times, a shift in financial accessibility, a shift in what the housing market has actually offered. But even currently trying to look at properties for myself to even think about buying, they're so far out of range that I have to, and I'm almost forced to start looking in other communities outside of the Bay Area. Right, so below market rate, even at the rate of which interest rates are at the moment, are not attainable for most people. And even being a city employee, you look at these rates and sure there are loans, with really high interest rates, but they never match what your actual income is. So even if I wanted to buy a property, the only thing that would even be remotely attainable for me would probably be like a 600 square foot home that doesn't exist. A well-resourced neighborhood to me would mean having access to a good and running library, a place of prayer if that is something that is important to somebody's religious beliefs a safe community center, good education, a good public school with good reviews, something that doesn't only um, pertain to private school because we go to certain neighborhoods and we look at Pacific Heights, for instance, and we have access to really clean eating, great restaurants, good music, good places of prayer, places to you know practice religious activities. We have really phenomenal schools that are highly rated but also extremely expensive. Um, so you have things like Stewart Hall, um, Convent, you have University and all these schools that are only accessible for people that have the funds to do so and the means to do so. And so when we look at other neighborhoods that are quote unquote still affordable, they don't have all these resources. You maybe have one or two corner stores. You maybe have a park that hasn't been upkept and maintained as well as other, I guess, locations. You have maybe a gas station, maybe an abandoned building or something that hasn't been lived in for quite a few years, but there is a stark difference between the well-populated, well-financially supported communities versus ones that aren't. Right, so if we look at, let's say, Noe Valley versus Bayview Hunters Point. Bayview Hunters Point has always been an environment where you do not have access to the resources that any other community in the city does. And this has been something that we've known for years and we're starting to build more housing there. And as we see that, and as we see an influx of money moving there, we see more resources being built, but something that I've always questioned is why is it, it take why does it take that in order for these resources to be built? But this has been something that ever since I was a kid, we knew existed. Um, and Noe Valley has always been very family oriented, but has always had 
different places like Whole Foods and tons of great restaurants and tons of access for children to go to clean, safe parks. And that's not something that we see all over the city, um, which has been unfortunate and continues to kind of be the same way. Yeah, I know there's always a kickback and a pushback for building housing in specific neighborhoods. For instance, the old children's hospital has been vacant now for, I want to say, a number of years. And this would be a great place to create housing. And there's been a lot of backlash from the neighborhood saying they don't want that type of housing in their neighborhood. But these are also people that are communicating. They're really fed up with certain issues that we're experiencing in the city, like homelessness and poverty. And so there needs to be a point in which the city comes together and makes a decision collectively that we are looking out for the best interest of everybody that lives in the city. I think that it's really important that everybody is a part of providing a affordable, sustainable way of living for the folks that live in San Francisco. And I think the same way that we approach homelessness and creating resources and providing safe places for people to live, you also need to provide a safe place for the people that serve the city because what do we do without them? As first responders, you guys heavily rely on us. Our call volume reflects this. The needs of the city reflects this. And if you want to see a fully functioning city that kind of offers the best opportunity for everybody, you need to provide a space that is healthy, safe, affordable to live for the people that serve it. Yeah, I think there are a handful of neighbor neighborhoods my whole life that have not been available or affordable for me. Like Pacific Heights is a gorgeous neighborhood that has tons of resources, it has tons of space, it's clean, it's quiet, but I'll never be able to afford living there. I'd say even Noe Valley, a neighborhood that has tons of great schooling, it has really safe places for children to hang out if you're looking to raise a family, I'd love to live in, but I wouldn't be able to afford it. The mission is slowly changing to a place that I can no longer afford to live in, but it's also shifting as a neighborhood as a whole. Um, and so really when you look at housing and what's affordable, it's the outskirts of the city that have lack of access to specific resources that everywhere else more centralized do. Um, with the exception of, I'd say, the Tenderloin, because that has always been a place that has provided affordable living with SROs to low-income marginalized communities. I know that we have a program in place for first-time home buyers in the city, which really creates an amazing opportunity, but that isn't enough based on the budget that they have for the majority of people in the city that do not make an income that matches the, the needs of, match, it doesn't match the pricing of the housing market. And so I'd love to see more loans like that that were put in place. I'd love to see, um, I guess more of an attempt to manage and kind of disperse taxes that we're paying towards housing because we pay very, very steep, expensive taxes in the city and we don't really see it reflected in how they provide affordability in housing. Um, I'd love to see there be more agreement and cohesiveness amongst people that are kind of preventing development in neighborhoods that they are trying to preserve. Um, and more open minded, op more open mindedness around diversifying a city that really used to be extremely diverse and inclusive, and um, less divisiveness in that. I really appreciate the accessibility of my neighborhood. I'm right near the Panhandle at the moment, um, and I appreciate the ability to get outside and have access to like a beautiful walk through the park and the access to Golden Gate Park. There are still a few old bars, if you're into that, whether you drink or you don't drink, that provide really great music and art. Um, it is accessible and really, really centralized to everything in the city. The Castro is extremely close. The Richmond is really close. You head a little bit further and you have Lower Pack Heights. Even further than that, you're heading kind of towards Japantown. And so I love how centralized my neighborhood is. But something that it's really missing is kind of the sense of community and the diversity. Diversity And having had spent time there as a child and just seeing so many different people of so many different walks of life, whether it be somebody who is of Hispanic descent or African American descent or somebody who is Asian American or Pacific Islander or Middle Eastern, there was representation. And as a kid, you know, my mom would take us to Golden Gate Park every Saturday and we'd rent a bike or we'd go rollerblading. And that was kind of what happened, but you found community that way. And I think when you start to take away from 
accessibility and affordability, you, you lose a lot of that. And now demographically, my neighborhood's predominantly Caucasian, um, a little blended with a little bit of Asian American or you know Asian descent, but you don't see as much of that vibrance and that diversity and mix of different backgrounds. And so I think what I would love for this community is to kind of shift back towards that, whether that be making things more affordable for individuals so that they can come back to a community they once called their own, or just branching out to, um, I guess, different communities and resources and asking for that support. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, the mission specifically used to have a very big community of Hispanic, um, Central South American communities, right? You had a lot of people from Nicaragua, El Salvador, Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, and that's really been lost. And I think there was this vibrancy and community that was just really phenomenal and amazing. There were a lot of families based there. There was a lot of music, there was a lot of art, there was a lot of culture, and the Western edition in Fillmore predominantly used to be African American. And within that, you had the jazz community, jazz festivals, you had tons of vibrant, amazing, lovely food and music. And we're losing a lot of that throughout the city, which is really unfortunate. And I'd love to see some of that community and kind of like integrity and just, I guess, like special magic around that come back and um, it's really sad to see that shift because people can't afford to live here and so seeing people priced out and having to leave and not having the access to resources that they used to is just disappointing you know Lake Street has always been a street that has had I would say more wealthy people living on it and the houses are a little more expensive but at this point they're just not attainable for most folks and I would say the sunset has always been a place growing up where a lot of my friends that were of Russian descent or Asian American or Chinese or Vietnamese or Cambodian used to live in and a lot of their parents weren't able to sustain that level of living and have now since been priced out or left or had to leave because they could no longer afford housing that was affordable. Like most of the people that I know that live in the sunset are only able to live there or continue to live there because their families were lucky and bought at a time where housing was affordable. So most of the kids that I know that grew up going to Catholic school, their parents still live there, but that's because they were able to hold on to a home that has either then been passed down or bought out by family, which is always more affordable than needing to get a loan. Um, one of my coworkers was able to buy a house from their grandparent due to the fact that it was affordable. Yeah, I'd say a thriving community looks like one that is able to provide clean eating, right? Whether that be farmer's markets and locally sourced foods, whether that be having a place like Whole Foods that offers organic non-GMO options. A thriving community to me entails having access to music and education and arts and creativity and safe places of learning. Um, a thriving community also means having people that don't look like you. It's important to be exposed to folks that come up from different backgrounds than you do. Um, that means also having accessibility to healthcare and or health clinics, not just one-time visits, hospitals, museums, art, culture. Um, and so I think thriving communities means it's all encompassing and all inclusive in every aspect and not specific to a specific, de it's not catering just to a specific demographic or socioeconomic need. I'd love to have a city where people that grew up here and contributed and continue to contribute to the city had the option to buy a house or live in a place that they comfortably could consider home whether that be an apartment and that's all that you've ever aspired to have, whether that be a three bedroom house because that's all you've ever wanted in your life before, but also just having a clean, affordable, safe, comfortable way of life.